In a world dominated by professional athletes, one man goes on without recognition. He lives in the shadows while the stars get the spotlight. His name, Kevin Francis Dunbar. In a small town roughly 3,000 miles northeast of Los Angeles, Kevin resides. He has recently skyrocketed to the top of his craft through hard work and perseverance. Redefining the position, he is leaving his mark as the greatest mascot to ever grace the Viking costume. This kid was born for the big stage. Dunbar goes left. Oh my goodness, who saw that one coming? If athletes are indeed king, then that makes this kid the royal jester. Kevin Dunbar is the definition of what a mascot should be. Kevin's a kid who doesn't like to lose, which is convenient because there's no losing when you're a mascot. I cannot express into words the greatness of Kevin Dunbar. Yo, Kevin is the man. There just ain't nothing more to it. He is the bee's knees of mascotting. He is a maestro, and his fans, they are his orchestra. Can I tell you something, Bob? These bands worship Kevin Dunbar. I mean, they just won't stop cheering for him. Kevin Dunbar is the kind of guy who bleeds brown and gold. Some people confuse it for face paint, but I can tell you the truth. He bleeds brown and gold. I am speechless, yet there are still words coming out of my mouth. We wouldn't be where we were today if it wasn't for Dunbar. Kevin Dunbar is officially the greatest mascot I've ever laid my eyes on. Raised by a long line of mascots, Dunbar was destined for greatness since birth. He wasn't going to settle for being anything less than the Notre Dame Leprechaun. The neighborhood he grew up in wasn't the safest, but according to recent studies, it was the second safest. Most normal kids, they have posters of their favorite sport icons on their wall. Brett Favre, Tom Brady, Chuck Knobloch. Not Kevin Dunbar. He had posters of all his favorite mascots, Ugga the Bulldog, the Notre Dame Leprechaun, Sparty the Spartan, you know, all the greats. For Kevin Dunbar, playing sports was never really his forte, but he could always try to help out the team by doing anything he could on the sideline. And believe me, he could do a lot. He was one of the rare kids I knew who could turn a freezing 30 degree bench into a nice roasty, toasty 80 degree cushion. And for that reason alone, he was the most valuable asset to our whole team. Dunbar would try to fulfill the promise he showed as a youngster by trying out for school mascot during his senior year of high school. But coming off a year in which South had one of its most memorable mascots in school history, Kevin would have some big shoes to fill. And he was only like nine and a half, so things weren't looking good. Given the circumstances, Dunbar implemented a strict workout regimen in preparation for the season. Kevin Dunbar lived in the weight room for four months. He never lifted a weight or a dumbbell. Thing was, his house burned down and he needed a place to stay. Coach Scarpelli worked us really hard up at Brooklyn. But any time I thought about not giving 110%, I thought about Kevin Dunbar back in West Nye going through five a days just to get ready for the season. Now that is dedication to your sport. Finally, Judgment Day arrived. In a gymnasium densely packed with coaches and scouts, Kevin would have to let his nerves of steel take over. So on the day of the tryouts, Kevin was so nervous he lost his lunch. We looked everywhere. We looked in my trunk, in his book bag, in his locker. I called his mom even, man. She said, you didn't bring it, didn't have it. So I was actually planning on trying out to be the mascot, but when I heard Kevin was going to be my competition, I completely shot down my dreams. Well, on the preseason, um, we did take a lot of heat for it, but uh, when we made the change, uh, Dunbar was our man, so uh, we went with him. Bringing a whole new breed of mascot to the sport, Kevin possessed an unprecedented blend of intensity, motivation, and inspiration. Everyone always asks me why I decided to play football this year. What changed? And all I do is look at him and say two words, Kevin Dunbar. And that kid is a purebred winner. The team really needed an intensity boost. That's what Dunbar gave us. After every win, we invited Kevin out with us. But being the party animal he was, he knew he wouldn't have time to recover before next week's game. Kevin Dunbar is the kind of guy who brings a little extra to the table. Like our pregame dinners, he brings those pepper shakers that you have to turn and stuff. Things are incredible. I love those things. Kev's idea of a post-game celebration consisted only of a cold shower and preparation for next week's game. He was all business. Off the record, 
Mr. Luther has to personally inject Kevin Dunbar with a horse tranquilizer before every game. Extreme? No. Nah. In the preseason, during one of our scrimmages, Kevin Dunbar put the face off an opposing cheerleader. Our girl's face. Man, I, I don't know. So what if he attacked a fan with a crowbar? That's hard-nosed school spirit. But some felt that Kevin's motivational tactics bordered on violent and aggressive abuse. Kev's the kind of guy that doesn't take no for an answer. So I, for one, could see rape accusations in his future. He would even go to cheerleading practice to see if the cheerleaders were uh, performing up to his standards. If they weren't, he'd make them run suicides and do push-ups. The kid demanded perfection. If he's not happy with the way a fan is cheering, he'll let him know about it. And during our game against Rampo, he went up at halftime into the stands and started berating my 80-year-old grandma. And you know what? I don't blame him. After the North Rockland loss, Dunbar came into the locker room and just, he just crucified us, man. A couple of kids quit the team and checked into therapy. You think ecstasy messes up your mind? Try messing with Dunbar. After we were crushed by John J. East Fishkill, I didn't come to school for an entire week after that. Most people thought it was because I took the loss hard. The real reason is, I was scared to see Kevin. I mean, that kid is a pit bull, and he does not like to lose. After the first loss of the season, things went sour. Kevin was being mocked and ridiculed by the opposing team's players. He responded with an obscene hand gesture at which the athletic director was none too pleased with. I personally believe the media was out to get him. I mean, they blew the whole crotch grab thing way out of proportion. After another tough loss and no fan support, Dunbar spiraled even more out of control. He was not receiving the respect, a position like his warranted. Every morning he woke up and asked himself how he can improve. But the problem was, he was so good, so great, so perfect, he had nowhere to go but down. Even the lineman got more recognition than he did. When would the madness stop? It's crazy. I feel really bad for Kevin. He went out there every week just looking for a little recognition. He just never got any. And therefore, he refused to attend the next game. Kevin Dunbar was the 12th man on the field. So when he wasn't there, it was like we were missing a player. And when you go up against a team like Ossining, you can't afford to be a man down. I mean, our cheerleaders are good, but they're not that good. In times of trouble, Kev was always the one I looked to for inspiration. And when I didn't see him over there on the sideline cheering me on, there was an emptiness that I couldn't fill inside of me. Critics were chastising him, claiming that one cannot perform up to his level without the use of performance-enhancing drugs. Well, yeah, you know, there's been some controversy, and, you know, his name was smeared all over the blogs on, on the journal news and there was talk about uh, sports enhancement drugs, uh, ma uh, mascot formula, uh, fuel drinks. I mean, I, 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 I personally don't think he was doing anything unethical. South went on to lose a third consecutive game and to make matters worse, Kevin's guidance counselor advised him that his GPA was not quite Notre Dame material.